Act Three of The Devil is an Ass by Ben Johnson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One A Room in Fitzdotrell's House. Enter Thomas Guilthead and Plutarchus. All this is to make you a gentleman. Oh, have you learned, son, wherefore had I placed you with Sir Paul Etherside but to have so much law to keep your own? Besides, he is a justice here in town, and dwelling son with him, you shall learn that in a year shall be worth twenty, of having stayed you at Oxford or at Cambridge, or sending you to the inns of court, or France. I'm called for now in haste by Master Meercraft to trust Master Fitzjarrell, a good man. I have inquired him eighteen hundred a year, his name is current, for a diamond ring of forty. Shall not be worth thirty, that's gained, and this is to make you a gentleman. Oh, but good father, you trust too much. Boy, boy, we live by finding fools out to be trusted. Our shop books are our pastures, our corn grounds. We lay em open for them to come into, and when we have them there, we drive them up into one of our two pounds, the Compter Strait and this is to make you a gentleman we citizens never trust but we do cousin for if our debtors pay we cousin them and if they do not then we cousin ourselves but that's a hazard every one must run that hopes to make his son a gentleman i do not wish to be one truly father in a descent or two we come to be just in their state fit to be cousined like them and i had rather have tarried in your trade for since the gentry scorn the city so much, methinks we should in time, holding together, and matching in our own tribes, as they say, have got an act of common counsel for it, that we might cousin them out of rerum natura. Hey, if we had to act first to forbid the marrying of our wealthy heirs unto them, and daughters with such lavish portions, that confounds all. And makes a mongrel breed, father and when they have your money then they laugh at you or kick you down the stairs i cannot abide them i would fain have them cousined but not trusted enter meercraft oh is he come i knew he would not fail me welcome good guilthead i must have you do a noble gentleman a courtesy here in a mere toy some pretty ring or jewel of fifty or threescore pound make it a hundred and hedge in the last forty that i owe you and your own price for the ring aside to guilthead he's a good man sir and you may hap see him a great one he is likely to bestow hundreds and thousands with you if you can humour him a great prince he will be shortly what do you say in truth sir i cannot it has been a long vacation with us of what i pray thee of wit or honesty those are your citizens long vacations good father do not trust them nay tom guilted he will not buy a courtesy and beg it he'll rather pay than pray if you do for him you must do cheerfully his credit sir is not yet prostitute who's this thy son a pretty youth what is his name plutarchus sir plutarchus how came that about that year sir that i begot him i bought plutarch's lives and fell so in love with the book as i called my son by his name in hopes he should be like him and write the lives of our great men in the city and how do you breed him there his mind sir lies much to that way why then he's in the right way but now i had rather get him a good wife and plant him in the country there to use the blessing i shall leave him out upon t and lose the laudable means thou hast at home here to advance and make him a young alderman buy him a captain's place for shame and let him into the world early and with his plume and scarfs march through cheapside or along cornhill and by the virtue of those draw down a wife there from a window worth ten thousand pound get him the posture book and leaden men to set upon a table gainst his mistress chance to come by that he may draw her in and show her finsbury battles i have placed him with justice either side to get so much law as thou hast conscience 
come come thou dost wrong a pretty plutarchus who had not his name for nothing but was born to train the youth of london in the military truth that way his genius lies enter everell my cousin everell oh are you here sir pray you let us whisper takes meercraft aside father dear father trust him if you love me why i do mean it boy but what i do must not come easily from me we must deal with courtiers boy as courtiers deal with us if i have a business there with any of them why i must wait i am sure on it son and though my lord dispatch me yet his worshipful man will keep me for his sport a month or two to shew me with my fellow citizens i must make his trade long and full one quarter and help the spectacle of his greatness there nothing is done as once but injuries boy and then come headlong all their good turns move not or very slowly yet yeah, sweet father trust him well i will think they walk aside come you must do it sir i am undone else and your lady terrible is sit for me to dinner and my clothes are all at pawn i had sent out this morning before i heard you were coming to town some twenty of my epistles and no one return why have i told you of this this comes of wearing scarlet gold lace and cutworks your fine guttering with your blown roses cousin and your eating pheasant and god wit here in london haunting the globes and mermaids wedging in with lords still at the table and affecting lechery in velvet where could you have contented yourself with cheese salt butter and a pickled herring in the low countries there worn cloth and fustian been satisfied with the leap of your host's daughter in garrison a wench of a storer or your sutler's wife or the leaguer of two blanks you never then had run upon this flat to write your letters missive and send out your privy seals that thus have frighted off all your acquaintance that they shun you at distance worse than you do the bailiffs box up on you i come not to you for counsel i lack money you do not think what you owe me already i they are you that mean to pay you i'll be sworn i never meant it come you will project i shall undo your practice for this month else you know me ay you are a right sweet nature well that's all one you'll leave this empire one day you will not ever have this tribute paid your sceptre of the sword toy up your wit do and provoke me not will you help sir help to what i shall provoke another for you oh, i cannot tell try me i think i am not so utterly of an awe unto me melted but i can do myself good on occasions enter fitzdottrell strike in then for your part they go up to fitzdottrell master fitzdottrell if i transgress in point of manners afford me your best construction i must beg my freedom from your affairs this day how sir it is in succour of this gentleman's occasion my kinsman you'll not do me that affront sir i am sorry you should so interpret it but sir it stands upon his being invested in a new office he has stood for long master of the dependencies a place of my projection too sir and hath met much opposition but the state now sees that great necessity of it as after all their writing and their speaking against duels they have erected it his book is drawn for since there will be differences daily twixt gentlemen and that the roaring manner is grown offensive that those few we call the civil men of the sword abhor the vapours they shall refer now hither for their process and such as trespass gainst the rule of court are to be fined in troth a pretty place a kind of arbitrary court twill be sir i shall have matter for it i believe ere it be long i had a distaste 
but now sir my learned counsel they must have a feeling they'll part sir with no books without the hand gout be oiled and i must furnish if be money to me straight i am mine mint and exchequer to supply all what is a hundred pound no the happiness stands on a hundred pieces why he must have them if he will to-morrow sir will equally serve your occasions and therefore let me obtain that you will yield to timing a poor gentleman's distresses in terms of hazard by no means i must get him this money and will sir i protest i'd rather stand engaged for it myself than you should leave me oh good sir do you think so coarsely of our manners that we would for any need of ours be pressed to take it though you be pleased to offer it why by heaven i mean it i can never believe less but we sir must preserve our dignity as you do publish yours by your fair leave sir offers to be gone and i am a gentleman if you do offer to leave me now or if you do refuse me i will not think you love me sir i honour you and with just reason for these noble notes of the nobility you pretend to but sir i would know why a motive he a stranger you should do this Everell aside to meercraft you may roll with your fineness why that's all one if twere sir but my fancy but i have a business that perhaps i would have brought to his office oh sir i have done then if he can be made profitable to you yes and it shall be one of my ambitions to have at the first business may i not so you do mean to make a perfect business nay i'll do that assure you show me once sir it concerns the first be a perfect business for his own honour ay in the reputation too of my place why why do i take this course else i am not altogether an ass good gentleman wherefore should i consult you do you think to make a song on how's your manner tell us do satisfy him give him the whole course first by request or otherwise you offer your business to the court wherein you crave the judgment of the master in the assistance well that is done now what do you upon it we straight sir have recourse to the spring-head visit the ground and so disclose the nature if it will carry or no if we do find by our proportions it is like to prove a sullen and black business that it be incorrigible and out of treaty then we file it a dependence so it is filed what follows i do love the order of these things we then advise the party if he be a man of means and havings that forthwith he set an easy state if not at least that he pretend it for by that the world takes notice that it now is a dependence and this we call sir publication a very sufficient after publication now then we grant our, our process which is diverse either by charter or sir or or tennis or in the challenger and challengee or with your spaniard your provocador and provocado have their several courses i have enough on for a hundred pieces yes for two hundred underwrite me do your man will take my bond that he will sure but these same citizens they are such sharks aside to fitzdodrell there's an old debt of forty i gave my word for one has run away to the bermudas and he will hook in that or he'll not do why let him that and the ring and a hundred pieces will all but make two hundred no no more sir what ready arithmetic you have aside to gilthead do you hear a pretty morning's work for you this do it you shall have twenty pound on it twenty pieces good father do it you will hook still 
"'Well, show us your ring. "'You could not have done this now with gentleness at first. "'We might have thanked you. "'But groan and have your courtesies come from you like a hard stool and stink. "'A man may draw your teeth out easier than your money. "'Come, we're little guilted here. "'No better in nature I should ne'er love him "'that could pull his lips off now.' "'Pulls him by the lips.' "'Was not thy mother a gentlewoman?' "'Yes, sir.' "'And went to the court at Christmas and St. George tide, "'and lent the Lord's men chains?' "'Of gold and pearl, sir.' "'I knew thou must take after somebody that couldst not be else. "'This was no sharp look. "'I'll have thee, Captain Guildhead, and march up, "'and take in Pimlico, and kill the bush at every tavern. "'Thou shalt have a wife, if smocks will mount, boy.' turns to Guilthead. How now? You have there now some Bristol stone or Cornish counterfeit you'd put upon us. No, sir, I assure you. Look on his lustre. He will speak himself. I'll give you leave to put him in a mill. He's no great large stone, but a true paragon. He has all his corners. View him well. He's yellow. Upon my faith, sir, of the right black water, and very deep. He's set without a foil, too. He's one of the yellow water. I'll sell cheap. And what do you value this at, thirty pound? No, sir. He cost me forty ere he was set. Turnings, you mean. I know your equivokes. You are grown the better fathers of em late. Well, where it must go, twill be judged, and therefore look you'd be right. You shall have fifty pound for it, not a denier more. To Fitzdottrell. And because you would have things dispatched, sir, I'll go presently inquire out this lady. If you think good, sir, having a hundred pieces ready, you may part with those now to serve my kinsman's turns, then he may wait upon you and on the freer, and take them when you have sealed again of guilt head. I care not if I do. And dispatch all together. There. They are just a hundred pieces. Turns them out on the table. I have told them over twice a day these two months. Well, go and seal them, sir. Make your return as speedy as you can. Exeunt Fitzdottrell, Guilthead, and Plutarchus. Come, sir, give me. They fall to sharing. Soft, sir. Merry and fair, too, then. Oh, no delaying, sir. But you will hear? Yes. When I have my dividend. There's forty pieces for you. What is this for? Your half. You know that Guilthead must have twenty. And what's your ring there? Shall I have none of that? Oh, that is to be given to a lady. Is it so? By that good light it is. Then, come, give me ten pieces more, then. Why? For guilt, Ed, sir, do you think I'll allow him any such share? You must. Must I? Do you your must, sir? I'll do mine. You will not part with the whole, sir, will you? Go to. Give me ten pieces. By what law do you this? Even lying law, sir, I must roar else. Good. You have heard how the S made his divisions wisely. And I am he, I thank you. Much good to you, sir. I shall be rid of this tyranny one day. Not while you do eat and lie about the town here, and coach it in your bullions, and I stand your name of credit and compound your business. Adjourn your beatings every term and make new parties for your projects. I have now a pretty task of it to hold you in with your lady Tailbush, but the toy will be how we shall both come off. Leave you your doubting, and do your portion what's assigned you. I never failed yet. With reference to your aids, you'll still be unthankful. Where shall I meet you, Anon? You have some feet to do alone, now, I see. You wish me gone. Well, I will find you out, and bring you after to the audit. Exit. Slight. 
There's engine share, too, I had forgot. This rain is too, too unsupportable. I must quit myself of this vassalage. Enter Engine, followed by Whittapole. Engine, welcome. How goes the cry? Excellent well. Will it do? Where's Robinson? Here is the gentleman, sir, will undertake it himself. I have acquainted him. Why did you so? Why, Robinson would have told him, you know, and he's a pleasant wit, will hurt nothing your purpose. Then he's of opinion that Robinson might want audacity, she being such a gallant. Now, he has been in Spain and knows the fashions there and can discourse, and being but mirth, he says, leave much to his care. But he is too tall. <laughs> For that he has the bravest advice. You'll love him for it. To say he wears chapinos, and they do so in Spain. And Robinson's as tall as he. Is he so? Every jot. Nay, I had rather to trust a gentleman with it of the two. Pray you go to him then, sir, and salute him. Sir, my friend Engine has acquainted you with a strange business here. A merry one, sir, the Duke of Drowned Land and his Duchess? Yes, sir. Now that the conjurers have laid him by, I have made bold to borrow him a while. With purpose, yet, to put him out, I hope, to his best use. Yes, sir. For that small part that I am trusted with, put off your care. I would not lose to do it, for the mirth will follow of it. And, well, I have a fancy. Sir, that will make it well. You will report it so. Where must I have my dressing? At my house, sir. You shall have caution, sir, for what he yields to sixpence. You shall pardon me. I will share, sir, in your sports only, nothing in your purchase. But you must furnish me with compliments to the manner of Spain, my coach, my god Duenas. Engines, your provador. But, sir, I must, now I have entreated trust with you thus far, secure still in your quality, acquaint you with somewhat beyond this. The place designed to be the scene for this our merry matter, because it must have countenance of women to draw discourse and offer it, is hereby, at the Lady Tailbushes. I know her, sir, and her gentleman usher. Master Ambler? Yes, sir. Sir, it shall be no shame to me to confess to you that we poor gentlemen that want acres must for our needs turn fools up and plough ladies sometimes to try what glebe they are, and this is no unfruitful piece. She and I now are on a project for the fact and venting of a new kind of fucus paint for ladies to serve the kingdom wherein she herself hath travelled specially by way of service unto her sex, and hopes to get the monopoly as the reward of her invention. What is her end in this? Merely ambition, sir, to grow great and court it with the secret, though she pretend some other. For she's dealing already upon a caution for the shares, and Master Ambler he is named examiner for the ingredients, and the register of what is vented, and shall keep the office. Now, if she break with you of this, as I must make the leading thread to your acquaintance, that how experience gotten in your being abroad will help our business, think of some pretty additions, but to keep her floating. It may be she will offer you a part, any strange names of— Sir? I have my instructions. Is it not high time to be making ready? Yes, sir. The fool's inside, Dottrell. Away, then. Exeunt Engine and Whittapole. Re-enter Fitzdottrell. Return so soon? Yes. Here's the ring. I have sealed. But there's not so much gold in all the row, he says. Till it come from the mint, it is ta'en up for the gamesters. There's a shop shift. Plague on him. He does swear it. He'll swear and forswear, too. It is his trade. You should not have left him. Sad. Ah, I can go back and beat him yet. No, now let him alone. I was so earnest after the main business to have this ring gone. True. And it is time I have learned, sir, since you went, her ladyship eats with the Lady Tailbush here hard by. In the lane here? 
Yes, if you had a servant now of presence, well clothed, and of an airy, voluble tongue, neither too big nor little for his mouth, that could deliver your wife's compliment to send along with all. I have one, sir. A very handsome, gentlemanlike fellow, that I do mean to make my duchess's as sure. I entertained him but this morning, too. I'll call him to you. The worst of him is his name. She'll take no note of that, but of his message. Devil! Enter Pug. How you like him, sir. <laughs> Pace, go a little. Let's see you move. He'll serve, sir. Give it him, and let him go along with me. I'll help to present him and it. Look you do, sir. Discharge this well, as you expect your place. Do you hear? Go on. Come up with all your honours. I would fain see him do it. Trust him with it. Remember kissing of your hand, and answering with the French time, and flexure of your body. I could now so instruct him. And for his words? I'll put them in his mouth. Oh, but I have them of the very academies. Sir, you'll have use for them, anon yourself, I warrant you, after dinner, when you are called. S slide, that will be just playtime. It cannot be. I must not lose the play. Sir, but you must, if she appoint to sit, and she is president. Split. It is the devil. And where his damn too, you must now apply yourself, sir, to this holy, or lose all. If I could but see a piece. Sir, never think on't. Come but to one act. I did not care. But to be seen to rise, go away. To vex the players, and to punish their poet. Keep him in awe. But say that he be one, will not be awed, but laugh at you. How then? Then he shall pay for his dinner himself. Perhaps he would do that twice, or rather than thank you, come get the devil out of your head, my lord, I'll call you so in private still, and take your lordship in your mind. You were, sweet lord, in talk to bring a business to the office. Yes. Why should not you, sir, carry it on yourself, before the office be up, and show the world you had no need of any man's direction, in point, sir, of sufficiency? I speak against a kinsman, but as one that tenders your grace's good. Oh, I thank you. To proceed. To publication. Have your deed drawn presently, and leave a blank to put in your fifes, one, two, or more, as do you see cause. I thank you. Heartily I do thank you. Not a word more. I pray you, as you love me, let me alone, that I could not think of this as well as he. Oh, I could beat my infinite blockhead. Exeunt. Scene two. The lane near the Lady Tailbush's house. Enter Meercraft, followed by Pug. Come, we must this way. How far is it? Hard by here, over the way. They cross over. Now to achieve this ring from this same fellow, that is, to assure it before he give it. Though my Spanish lady be a young gentleman of means and scorn to share, as he doth say, I do not know how such a toy may tempt his ladyship, and therefore I think best it be assured. Sir, be the ladies brave we go unto? Oh, yes. And shall I see them and speak to them? What else? Enter trains. Have you your false beard about you, trains? Yes. And is this one of your double cloaks? The best of them. Be ready, then. Exeunt. Scene three. A hall in Lady Tailbush's house. Enter Meercraft and Pug, met by Pitfall. Sweet pitfall, come, I must bus. Offers to kiss her. Away! I'll set thee up again, never fear that. Canst thou get near a bird? No thrushes hungry? Stay till cold weather come, I'll help thee to an ousel or a field fair. Who's within with madam? I'll tell you straight. Exit hastily. Please you stay here a while, sir, I'll go in. Exit. I do so long to have a little venery while I am in this body. 
i would taste of every sin a little if it might be after the manner of man hmm sweetheart re-enter pitfall what would you sir pug runs to her nothing but fall into you be your blackbird my pretty pit as the gentleman said your throstle lie tame and taken with you here is gold to buy you so much new stuffs from the shop as i may take the old up enter trains in his false beard and cloak you must send sir the gentleman the ring hmm there it is exit trains nay look will you be foolish pitt this is strange rudeness <sighs> dear pitt i'll call i swear enter meercraft where are you sir is your ring ready go with me huh? i sent it to you me when by whom a fellow here even now came for it in your name i sent none sure my meaning ever was you should deliver it yourself so was your master's charge you know re-enter trains dressed as at first what fellow was it do you know him here but now he had it saw you any trains not i the gentlewoman saw him inquire pug aside i was so earnest upon her i marked not my devilish chief has put me here in flesh to shame me this dull body i am in i perceive nothing with i offer at nothing that will succeed sir she saw none she says pug aside <sighs> satan himself has taken a shape to abuse me it could not be else this is above strange that you should be so reckless what will you do sir how will you answer this when you are questioned pug aside oh, run from my flesh if i could put off mankind this is such a scorn and will be a new exercise for my archduke woe to the several cudgels must suffer on this back can you no succour sir alas the use of it is so present i ask sir credit for another but till to-morrow there is not so much time sir but however the lady is a noble lady and will to save a gentleman from check be entreated to say she has received it do you think so will she be won no doubt to such an office it will be a lady's bravery and her pride and not be known on it after unto him that were a treachery upon my word be confident return unto your master my lady president sets this afternoon has tamed this ring commends her services unto your lady duchess you may say she is a civil lady and does give her all her respects already bid you tell her she lives but to receive her wished commandments and have the honour here to kiss her hands for which she'll stay this hour yet hasten you your prince away and sir you will take care the excuse be perfect you confess your fears too much <laughs> the shame is more i'll quit you of either exeunt end of act three Act Four of The Devil is an Ass by Ben Jonson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Scene One A Room in Lady Tailbush's House. Enter Lady Tailbush and Meercraft. A pox upon referring to commissioners. I had rather hear that it were past the seals you courtiers move so snail-like in your business would i had not begun with you 
we must move madam in order by degrees not jump why there was sir john moneyman could jump a business quickly true he had great friends but because some sweet madam can leap ditches we must not all shun to go over bridges the harder parts i make account are done now tis referred you are infinitely bound unto the ladies they have so cried it up do they like it then they have sent the spanish lady to gratulate with you i must send them thanks and some remembrances that you must and visit them where's ambler lost to-day we cannot hear of him not madam no in good faith they say he lay not at home to-night and here has fallen a business between your cousin and master manley has unquieted us all so i hear madam pray you how was it troth it but appears ill on your kinsman's part you may have heard that manley is a suitor to me i doubt not i guessed it madam and it seems he trusted your cousin to let fall some fair reports of him unto me which he did so far from it as he came in and took him railing against him how and what said manley to him enough i do assure you and with that scorn of him and the injury as i do wonder how everill bore it but that guilt undoes many men's valours enter manly here comes manly madam i'll take my leave you shall not go in faith i'll have you stay and see the spanish miracle of our english lady let me pray your ladyship lay your commands on me some other time now i protest and i will have all peace and friends again it will be but ill-soldered <laughs> you are too much affected with it i cannot madam but think on it for the injustice sir his kinsman here is sorry not i madam i am no kin to him we but call cousins and if he were sir i have no relation unto his crimes you are not urged with them i can accuse sir none but mine own judgment for though it were his crime so to betray me i am sure it was more mine own at all to trust him but he therein did use but his old manners and savour strongly what he was before come he will change faith i must never think it nor were it reason in me to expect that for my sake he should put off a nature he sucked in with his milk it may be madam deceiving trust is all he has to trust to if so i shall be loath that any hope of mine should bait him of his means you are sharp sir this act may make him honest if he were to be made honest by an act of parliament i should not alter in my faith of him enter lady either side either side welcome dear either side how hast thou done good wench thou hast been a stranger i have not seen thee this week ever your servant madam where hast thou been i did so long to see thee visiting and so tired i protest madam tis a monstrous trouble and so it is i swear i must to-morrow begin my visits would they were over at court it tortures me to think on them i do hear you have cause madam your suit goes on who told thee one that can tell master either side oh thy husband yes faith there's life in it now it is referred if we once see it under the seals wench then have with them for the great carriage six horses and the two coachmen with my ambler bear and my three women we will live in faith the examples of the town and govern it i'll lead the fashion still you do that now sweet madam oh but then i'll every day bring up some new device thou and i either side will first be in it i will give it thee and they shall follow us thou shalt i swear wear every month a new gown out of it 
thank you good madam pray thee call me tailbush as i thee either side i love not this madam then i protest to you tailbush i am glad your business so succeeds thank thee good either side but master either side tells me that he likes your other business better which of the toothpicks i never heard of it ask master Maycroft. madam aside to manly he is one in a word i'll trust his malice with any man's credit i would have abused sir if you think you do please me in this you are deceived no but because my lady named him my kinsman i would satisfy you what i think of him and pray you upon it to judge me so i do ah that ill men's friendship is as unfaithful as themselves do you hear have your business about toothpicks yes madam did i near tell it you i meant to have offered it your ladyship on the perfecting the patent how is it for serving the whole state with toothpicks somewhat an intricate business to discourse but i show how much the subject is abused first in that one commodity then what diseases and putrefactions in the gums are bred by those are made of adulterate and false wood my plot for reformation of these fellows to have all toothpicks brought unto an office there sealed and such as counterfeit them mulleted and last for venting them to have a book printed to teach their use which every child shall have throughout the kingdom that can read and learned to pick his teeth by which beginning early to practice with some other rules of never sleeping with the mouth open chewing some grains of mastic will preserve the breath pure and so free from taint enter trains and whispers him ha ah, what is sayest thou good faith it sounds a very pretty business so master either side says madam the lady is come is she good wait upon her in exit meercraft my ambler was never so ill absent either side how do i look to-day am i not dressed sprantly looks in her glass yes verily madam poxum madam will you not leave that yes good tailbush so sounds not that better what vile fugus is this thou hast got on tis pearl pearl oyster shells as i breathe either side i know it here comes they say a wonder sirrah has been in spain will teach us all she's sent to me from court to gratulate with me prithee let's observe her what faults she has that we may laugh at them when she is gone that we will heartily tailbush re-enter meercraft introducing whitapole dressed as a spanish lady oh me the very infanta of the giants here is a noble lady madam come from your great friends at court to see your ladyship and have the honour of your acquaintance sir she does us honour pray you say to her ladyship it is the manner of spain to embrace only never to kiss she will excuse the custom your use of it is law please you sweet madam to take a seat yes madam i have had the favour through a world of fair report to know your virtues madam and in that name have desired the happiness of presenting my service to your ladyship your love madam i must not own it else both are due madam to your great undertakings great in troth madam they are my friends that think them anything if i can do my sex by em any service i have my ends madam and they are noble ones that make a multitude beholden madam the commonwealth of ladies must acknowledge from you except some envious madam you are right in that madam of which race i encountered some but lately who it seems have studied reasons to discredit your business how sweet madam nay the parties will not be worth of your paws most ruinous things madam that have put off all hope of being recovered to a degree of handsomeness but their reasons madam i would fain hear 
some madam i remember they say that painting quite destroys the face oh that's an old one madam there are new ones too corrupts the breath hath left so little sweetness in kissing as tis now used but for fashion and surely will be taken for a punishment decays the foreteeth that should guard the tongue and suffers that run riot everlasting and which is worse some ladies when they meet cannot be merry and laugh but they do spit in one another's faces manly aside i should know this voice and face too then they say tis dangerous to all the fallen yet well-disposed madams that are industrious and desire to earn their living with their sweat for any distemper of heat and motion may displace the colours and if the paint once run about their faces twenty to one they will appear so ill-favoured their servants run away too and leave the pleasure imperfect and the reckoning also unpaid pox these are poets reasons some old lady that keeps a poet has devised these scandals faith we must have the poets banished madam as master either side says master fitzdottrell and his wife where enter mr and mrs fitzdottrell followed by pug Meercraft to Whittipole. Madam, the Duke of Drowndland that will be shortly. Is this, my lord? The same. Your servant, madam. Whittipole takes Manly aside. How now, friend, offended that I have found your haunt here? No, but wondering at your strange-fashioned venture hither. It is to show you what they are you so pursue. I think twill prove a medicine against marriage to know their manners. Stay, and profit then. The lady, madam, whose prince has brought her here to be instructed. Presents Mrs. Fitzdottrell. Please, you sit with us, lady? That's Lady President. A goodly woman! I cannot see the ring, though. Sir, she has it. But, madam, these are very feeble reasons so i urged madam that the new complexion now to come forth in name of your ladyship's focus has no ingredient but i durst eat i assure you so do they in spain sweet madam be so liberal to give us some of your spanish focuses they are infinite madam so i hear they have water of gourds of radish the white beans flowers of glass of thistles rose marine raw honey mustard seed and bread dough baked the crumbs of bread goat's milk and whites of eggs camphire and lily roots the fat of swans marrow of veal white pigeons and pine kernels the seeds of nettles purseline and hare's gall lemons thin-skinned how her ladyship has studied all excellent things but ordinary madam no the true rarities are the avangada and argentata of queen isabella ay what are their ingredients gentle madam your alums gagliola or paul di pedra and saccarino turpentine of albezzo washed in nine waters soda de levante or your fern ashes benjamin de gotta crasso de serpa porcellato marino oils of lantisco soci moggia make the admiral varnish for the face gives the right lustre but two drops rubbed on with a piece of scarlet makes a lady of sixty look as sixteen but above all the water of the white hen of the lady estefania's oh ay that same good madam i have heard of how is it done madam you take your hen plume it and skin it cleanse it all the innards then chop it bones and all add to four ounces of caravicins papitas soap of cypress make the decoction strain it then distill it and keep it in your galley pot well gilded three drops preserves from wrinkles warts spots moles blemish or sunburnings and keeps the skin in decimo sexto ever bright and smooth as any looking-glass and indeed is called the virgin's milk for the face oglioriale asherus neither cold nor heat will hurt and mix it with oil of myrrh and the red gilly flower called catupultia 
and the flowers of Rovistico makes the best muto or die of the whole world. Dear madam, will you let us be familiar? Your ladyship's servant. How do you like her? Admirable, but yet I cannot see the ring. Uh, sir. Meercraft, aside. I must deliver it or mar all this fool so jealous. Madam. Whispers Whittipal. Sir, wear this ring, and pray you take knowledge twas sent you by his wife, and give her thanks. Aside to Pug. Do not you dwindle, sir. Bear up. Oh, thank you, sir. But for the manner of Spain, sweet madam, let us be bold. Now we are in. Are all the ladies there in the fashion? None but grandees, madam, of the claspid train, which may be worn at length, too, or thus upon my arm. And do they wear chopinos all? If they be dressed in punto, madam. Gilt as those are, madam? Of goldsmith work, madam, and set with diamonds, and their Spanish pumps of perfumed leather. I should think it hard to go in them, madam. At the first it is, madam. Do you never fall in them? Never. I swear I should. Six times an hour. But you have men at hand still to help you, if you fall. Only one, madam, the Garuduenas, such a little old man as this. Points to trains. Alas, he can do nothing, this. I'll tell you, madam, I saw in the court of Spain once a lady fall in the king's sight along. And there she lay, flat spread, as an umbrella, her hooped there cracked. No man durst reach a hand to help her, till the Garaduenas came, who was the person only allowed to touch the lady there, and he but by this finger. Have they no servants, madam, there, nor friends? An escadoro or so, madam, that waits upon them in another coach at distance, and when they walk or dance, holds by a handkerchief, never presumes to touch them. This is scurvy, and a forced gravity. I do not like it. I like our own much better. Tis more French, and courtly ours. And tastes more liberty. We may have our dozens of visitors at once, make love to us. And before our husbands. Husband? As I am honest, Tailbush, I do think, if nobody should love me but my poor husband, I should e'en hang myself. Fortune forbid, wench, so fair a neck should have so foul a necklace. Tis true, as I am handsome. I received, lady, a token from you, which I would not be rude to refuse, being your first remembrance. Fitzdottrell, aside to Meercraft. Oh, I am satisfied now. Do you see it, sir? But since you come to know me nearer, lady, I beg the honour you will wear it for me. It must be so. Gives the ring to Mrs. Fitzdottrell. Mrs. Fitzdottrell, aside. Sure I have heard this tongue. Meercraft, aside to Whittipole. What do you mean, sir? Would you have me be mercenary? We'll recompense it anon in somewhat else. Exit Meercraft and trains. I do not love to be gulled, though in a toy. Wife, do you hear? Takes Mrs. Fitzdottrell aside. You are coming to the school, wife, where you may learn, I do perceive it, anything. How to be fine, or fair, or great, or proud, what you will, indeed, wife. Here it is taught, and I am glad on't that you may not say another day, when honours come upon you, you wanted means. I have done my parts, been to-day at fifty-pound charge. First for a ring to get you entered, then left my new play to wait upon you here to see it confirmed, that I may say both to mine eyes and ears, senses, you are my witness, she hath enjoyed all helps that could be had for love or money. To make a fool of her. Wife, well, that's your malice, the wickedness of your nature, to interpret your husband's kindness thus. But I'll not leave still to do good for your depraved affections. Intend it. Bend this stubborn will. Be great. Good madam, whom do they use in messages? They commonly use their slaves, madam. And does your ladyship think that so good, madam? No, indeed, madam. 
I therein prefer the fashion of England far, Of your young delicate page, or discreet usher. And I go with your ladyship in opinion, Directly for your gentleman usher. There's not a finer officer goes on ground. If he could be made and broken to his place once. Nay, so I presuppose him. And they are fitter managers too, sir. But I would have them call it our escadoros. Good. Say I should send to your ladyship, who, I presume, has gathered all the dear secrets to know how to make pastillos of the Duchess of Braganza, Coquetas, Homeonavanas, Montecatas, Alcoreas, Mustacazioli, or, say it were, the Pelador of Isabel, or balls against the itch, or aquananfa, or oil of jasmine for gloves on the Marquesa Muja, or for the head and hair. Why, these are offices. Fit for a gentleman, not a slave. They only might ask for your pivetta, Spanish coal to burn and sweeten a room. But the arcana of ladies' cabinets... Should be elsewhere trusted. You are much about the truth. Sweet honoured ladies, let me fall in with you. I have my female wit as well as my male, and I do know what suits a lady of spirit or a woman of fashion. And you would have your wife such? Yes, madam, airy, light. Not to plain dishonesty, I mean, but somewhat on this side i take you sir he has reasons lady i'll not give this rush for any lady that cannot be honest within a thread yes madam and yet venture as far for the other in her fame as can be go to pimlico dance the saraband hear and talk body laugh as loud as alarum squeak spring do anything in young company madam or a four gallants if they be brave or lords a woman is engaged i say so ladies it is civility to deny us nothing pug aside you talk of a university why hell is a grammar school to this but then she must not lose a look on stuffs or cloth madam nor no coarse fellow she must be guided, madam, by the clothes he wears and the company he is in, whom to salute. How far? I have told her this, and how that bawdry, too, upon the point, is in itself as civil a discourse. As any other affair of the flesh, whatever. But she will never be capable. She is not so much as coming, madam. I know not how she loses all her opportunities with hoping to be forced. I have entertained a gentleman, a younger brother here whom I would fain breed up her escudero against some expectations that I have, and she'll not countenance him. What's his name? Devil of Derbyshire. Bless us from him! Devil? Call him Deville, sweet madam. What you please, ladies. Deville's a prettier name. And sounds, methinks, as it came in with the conqueror. Over smocks? What things they are! that nature should be at leisure ever to make them. <sighs> My wooing is at an end. Aside and exit with indignation. What can he do? Let's hear him. Can he manage? Please you to try him, ladies. Stand forth, devil. Pug, aside. Oh, was all this but the preface to my torment? Come, let their ladyships see your honours. Oh, he makes a wicked leg. As ever I saw. Fit for a devil. Good, madam. Call him Deville. Deville? What property is there most required in your conceit now, and the escudero? Why do you not speak? A settled, discreet pace, madam. I think a barren head, sir, mountain-like, to be exposed to the cruelty of weathers. Ay, for his valley is beneath the waste, madam, and to be fruitful there, it is sufficient. Downless upon you, could not you hit this? Strikes him. Oh, good, sir. He then had had no barren head. You draw him too much in troth, sir. I must walk with the French stick like an old verger for you. Pug, aside. Oh, chief, call me to hell again and free me. Do you murmur now? Not I, sir. What do you take, Master Deville? The height of your employment in the true perfect escudero? When? What do you answer? 
to be able madam first to inquire then report the working of any lady's physic in sweet phrase yes that's an act of elegance and importance but what above oh that i had a goat for him to find out a good corn-cutter out on him most barbarous why did you do this now of purpose to discredit me you damned devil oh, sure if i be not yet i shall be aside all my days in hell were holidays to this tis labour lost madam he is a dull fellow of no capacity of no discourse oh if my umbler had been here ay madam you talk of a man where is there such another master deville put case one of my ladies here had a fine broch and would implore you forth to treat about a convenient match for her what would you observe the colour and the size madam and nothing else the moon you calf the moon ay and the sign yes and receipts for proneness then when the puppies came what would you do get their nativities cast this is well what more consult the almanac man which would be least which cleanliest and which silentest that is well madam and while she were with puppy walk her out and air her every morning very good and be industrious to kill her fleas yes he will make a pretty proficient pug aside <laughs> who coming from hell could look for such a catechizing <laughs> the devil is an ass i do acknowledge it fitzdottrell aside and looking at whittapole the top of woman all her sex in abstract Ooh, i love her to each syllable falls from her good madam give me leave to go aside with him and try him a little do and i'll withdraw madam with this fair lady read to her the while come sir pug aside oh dear chief relieve me or i perish a lady will follow you are not jealous sir oh madam you shall see stay wife behold i give her up here absolutely to you she is your own do with her what you will melt cast and form her as you shall think good set any stamp on i'll receive her from you as a new thing by your own standard exit well sir exit whittapole with mrs fitzdottrell and tailbush and either side with pug scene two another room in the same enter meercraft and fitzdottrell but what have you done in your dependent sense oh it goes on i met your cousin the master you did not acquaint him sir a faith but i did sir and upon better thought not without reason he being chief officer might have taken it ill else as a contempt against his place and that in time sir have drawn on another dependence no i did find him in good terms and ready to do me any service so he said to you but sir you do not know him why i presumed because this business of my wife's required me i could not have done better and he told me that he would go presently to your council a night here in the lane yes justice either side and get the fiefment drawn with a letter of attorney for livery and season that i knows the course but sir you mean not to make him feffy nay that i'll pause on enter pitfall how now little pitfall your cousin master everell would come in but he would know if master manley were here no tell him if he were i have made his peace exit pitfall he's one sir has no state and a man knows not how such a trust may tempt him i conceive you enter everell and plutarchus sir the same duty's done here pretty plutarchus art thou come with it and has sir paul viewed it his hand is to the draught will you step in sir and read it yes everell 
aside to Fitzdottrell. I pray you, sir, a word with you. Sir Paul Iverside will be to give you caution, whom you did make fiofy. For tis the trust of your whole state. And though my cousin here be a worthy gentleman, yet he fella as at the tall board been questioned, and we hold any man so impeached of doubtful honesty. I will not justify this, but give it you to make your profit of it. If you utter it, I can forswear it. I believe you, and thank you, sir. Exit. Scene three. Another room in the same. Enter Whittapole and Mrs. Fitzdottrell. Be not afraid, sweet lady. You are trusted to love, not violence, here. I am no ravisher, but one whom you, by your fair trust again, may of a servant make a most true friend. Manly enters behind. And such a one I need, but not this way. Sir, I confess me to you, the mere manner of your attempting me this morning took me, and I did hold my invention, and my manners, were both engaged to give it a requital, but not unto your ends. My hope was then, though interrupted ere it could be uttered, that whom I found the master of such language, that brain and spirit for such an enterprise could not, but if those suckers were demanded to right use, employ them virtuously, and make that profit of his noble parts which they would yield. Sir, you have now the ground to exercise them in. I am a woman that cannot speak more wretchedness of myself than you can read, matched to a mass of folly that every day makes haste to his own ruin. The wealthy portion that I brought him spend, and through my friend's neglect no jointure made me. My fortunes standing in this precipice, tis counsel that I want, and honest aids. And in this name I need you for a friend, never in any other, for his ill must not make me, sir, worse. Manly comes forward. O oh, friend, forsake not the brave occasion virtue offers you to keep you innocent. I have feared for both, and watched you, to prevent the ill I feared. But since the weaker side hath so assured me, let not the stronger fall by his own vice, or be the less a friend, cause virtue needs him. Virtue shall never ask my suckers twice. Most friend, most man, your counsels are commands. Lady, I can love goodness in you more than I did beauty, and do here entitle your virtue to the power upon a life you shall engage in any fruitful service, even to forfeit. Enter Meercraft. Madam. Aside to Whittable. Do you hear, sir? We have another leg straying for this dotrel. He has a quarrel to carry, and has caused a deed of fifement on his whole estate to be drawn yonder. He has within, and you only he means to make feffy. He has fallen so desperately enamoured on you, and talks most like a madman. You did never hear a frenetic so in love with his own favour. Now you do know, tis of no validity in your name as you stand. Therefore advise him to put in me. Enter Fitzdottrell. Everell and Plutarchus. He's come here. You shall share, sir. Madam, I have a suit to you, and after hand I do bespeak you. You must not deny me. I will be granted. Sir, I must know it, though. No, lady, you must not know it. Yet you must, too, for the trust of it, and the vain indeed which else were lost me. I would use your name, but in a faithment make my whole estate over unto you a trifle a thing of nothing some eighteen hundred alas i understand not those things sir i am a woman and most loath to embark myself you will not slight me madam nor you'll not quarrel me no no sweet madam i have already a dependence for which cause i do this let me put you in dear madam I may be fairly killed. You have your friends, sir, about you here for choice. She tells you right, sir. Death, if she do, what do I care for that? Say, I would have her tell me wrong. Why, sir, if for the trust you'll let me have the honour to name you one? Nay, uh, you do me the honour, madam. Who is it? This gentleman. 
pointing to Manley. Oh, no, sweet madam. He's friend to him with whom I have the dependence. Who might he be? Juan Whittipal. Do you know him? Alas, sir, he? A toy. This gentleman a friend to him? No more than I am, sir. But would your ladyship undertake that, madam? Yes, and what else for him you will engage me? What is his name? His name is Eustace Manley. Whence does he write himself? Of Middlesex, Esquire. Say nothing, madam. To Plutarchus. Clerk, come hither. Write Eustace Manley, Squire of Middlesex. Meercraft, aside to Whittipole. What have you done, sir? Named a gentleman that I'll be answerable for to you, sir. Had I named you, it might have been suspected. This way, tis safe. Come, gentlemen, your hands for witness. What is this? You have made election of a most worthy gentleman. But one of worth had spoke it. But now whence it comes, it is rather a shame unto me than a praise. Sir, I will give you any satisfaction. Be silent, then. Falsehood commends not truth. You do deliver this, sir, as your deed, to the use of Master Manley? Yes, and sir. To Manley. When did you see young Whittipool? I am ready for process now. Sir, this is publication. He shall hear from me. He would needs be courting my wife, sir. Yes, so witnesseth his cloak there. Nay, good sir. Madam, you did undertake. What? That he was not Whittipool's friend. I hear, sir, no confession of it. Oh, she knows not. Oh, now I remember. Madam, this young Whittipool would have debauched my wife and made me cuckold thorough a casement. He did fly her home to mine own window. But I think I sauced him and ravished her away out of his pounces. I have sworn to have him by the ears. I fear the toy will not do me right. No, that were a pity. What right do you ask, sir? Here he is, will do to you. Discovers himself. Oh! Whittable! Ay, sir, no more lady now, nor Spaniard. No, indeed. Tis Whittapole. Am I the thing I feared? A cuckold? No, sir, but you were late in possibility. I'll tell you so much. But your wife's too virtuous. We'll see her, sir, at home, and leave you here, to be made Duke of Shoreditch with a project. Thieves! Ravishers! Cry but another note, sir, I'll mar the tune of your pipe. Give me my deed, then. Neither. That shall be kept for your wife's good, who will know better how to use it. Ha! To feast you with my land? Sir, be you quiet, or I shall gag you ere I go. Consult your master of dependencies how to make this a second business. You have time, sir. Baffles him and exit with Manly. Oh, what will the ghost of my wise grandfather, my learned father, with my worshipful mother, think of me now, that left me in this world in state to be their heir, that am become a cuckold and an ass and my wife's ward? likely to lose my land have my throat cut all by her practice sir we are all abused and be so still what who hinders you i pray you let me alone i would enjoy myself and be the duke of drowned land you have made me sir we must play an after game of this but i am not in case to be a gamester i tell you once again you must be ruled and take some counsel Sir, I do hate counsel, as I do hate my wife, my wicked wife. But we may think how to recover all, if you will act. I will not think, nor act, nor yet recover. Do not talk to me. I'll run out of my wits rather than hear. I will be what I am. Fabian Fitzdottle, though all the world say nay to it. Exit. Let us follow him. Exit. End of Act 4 
Act 5 of The Devil is an Ass by Ben Johnson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Scene 1. A room in Tailbush's house. Enter Ambler and Pitfall. But has my lady missed me? Beyond telling. Here has been that infinity of strangers. And then she would have had you to have sampled you with one within that they are now a teaching, and thus pretend to your rank. Good fellow Pitfall, tell Master Meercraft I entreat a word with him. Exit Pitfall. This most unlucky accident will go near to be the loss of my place. I am in doubt. Enter Meercraft. With me? What say you, Master Ambler? Sir, I would beseech your worship, stand between me and my lady's displeasure for my absence. Oh, is that all? I warrant you. I would tell you, sir, but how it happened. Brief, good master Ambler, put yourself to your rack, for I have task of more importance. Sir, you'll laugh at me, but, so's truth, a very friend of mine, finding by conference with me that I lived too chaste for my complexion, and indeed to honest for my place sir did advise me if i did love myself as that i do i must confess spare your parenthesis to give my body a little evacuation well and you went to a whore no sir i durst not for fear it might arrive at somebody's ear it should not trust myself to a common house but got the gentlewoman to go with me and carry your bedding to a conduit head hard by the place or tyburn which they call my lord mayor's banqueting house now sir this morning was execution i never dreamt on it till i heard the noise of the people and the horses and neither i nor the poor gentleman durst stir till all was done and passed so that in the interim we fell asleep again nay if you fall from your gallop i am gone sir but when i waked to put on my clothes a suit i made new for the action it was gone and all my money with my purse, my seals, my hard wax, and my table books, my studies, and a fine new device I had to carry my pen and ink, my civet, and my toothpicks, all under one. But that which grieved me was the gentlewoman's shoes, with a pair of roses and garters I had given her for the business. So as that made us stay till it was dark, for I was fain to lend her mine, and walk in a rug by her barefoot to St. Giles. A kind of Irish penance, is this all, sir? To satisfy my lady. I will promise you, sir. I have told the true disaster. I cannot stay to you, sir, to condole, but gratulate your return. Exit. An honest gentleman, but he's never at leisure to be himself. He has such tides of business. Exit. Scene two. Another room in the same. Enter Pug. Oh, call me home again, dear chief, and put me to yoking foxes, milking of he goats, pounding of water in a mortar, laving the sea dry with a nutshell, gathering all the leaves are fallen this autumn, drawing farts out of dead bodies, making ropes of sand, catching the winds together in a net mustering of ends and numbering atoms <laughs> all that hell and you thought exquisite torments rather than stay me here a thought more i would sooner keep fleas within a circle and be a compton the thousand years which of them and how far outleap the other than endure a minute such as i have within <laughs> there is no hell to a lady of fashion all your tortures there are pastimes to it. It would be a refreshing for me to be in the fire again from hence. Enter Ambler and surveys him. Ambler, aside. This is my suit, and those the shoes and roses. They have such impertinent vexations. A general council of devils could not hit. Sees Ambler. <gasps> aside. This is he I took a sleep with his wench and borrowed his cloth. Mm, what might I do to balk him? Do you hear, sir? Pug, aside. Answer him. 
but not to the purpose what is your name i pray you sir is too late sir i ask not of the time but of your name sir i thank you sir yes it does hold sir certain hold sir what holds i must both hold and talk to you about these clothes a very pretty lace but the tailor cozened me no i am cozened by you robbed why when you please sir i am for threepenny gleek your man pox o oh, your gleek and threepence give me an answer sir my master is the best at it your master who is your master let it be friday night what should be then your best songs tom abethlem i think you are he does he mock me trow from purpose or do i not speak to him what i mean good sir your name only a couple of cocks sir if we can get a widgeon tis in season he hopes to make one of those skeptics of me i think i name them right and does not fly me i wonder at that tis a strange confidence i'll prove another way to draw his answer exit severally scene three a room in fitzdotterell's house enter meercraft fitzdotterell and everell it is the easiest thing sir to be done as plain as fizzling roll but with your eyes and foam at the mouth a little castle soap will do it to rub your lips and then a nutshell with toe and touchwood in it to spit fire did you ne'er read sir little darrell's tricks with the boy of burton and the seven in lancashire summers at nottingham all these do teach it and we'll give out sir that your wife has bewitched you in practice with those two as sorcerers and give you potions by which means you were not compos mentis when you made your fifement there's no recovery of your state but this this sir will sting and move in a court of equity for it is more than manifest that this was a plot of your wives to get your land i think it sir it appears nay and my cousin has known these gallants in these shapes do have done strange things sir one as a lady the other as a squire how a man of honesty may be fooled i thought him a very lady so did i renounce me else but this way sir you'll be revenged at height upon em all yes faith and since your wife has run the way of women thus e'en give her lost by this hand to me dead to all joys of her dear daughter i shall never pity her that could not pity herself princely resolve sir and like yourself still in potentia enter guildhead plutarchus sledge and sergeants guildhead what news oh sir my hundred pieces let me have them yet yes sir officers arrest him me i arrest you keep the peace i charge you gentlemen arrest me why for better security sir my son plutarchus assures me you are not worth a groat pardon me father i said his worship had no foot of land left and that i'll justify for i writ the deed have you these tricks in the city yes and more arrest this gallant too here at my suit points to meercraft ay and at mine he owes me for his lodging two year and a quarter why master guilthead landlord thou art not mad though thou art constable puffed up with the pride of the place do you hear sirs have i deserved this from you too for all my pains at court to give you each a patent for what upon my project of the forks forks what be they the laudable use of forks brought into custom here as they are in italy to the sparing of napkins that that should have made your bellows go at the forge as his at the furnace i have procured it have the signet for it dealt with the linen drapers on my private because i fear they were the likeliest ever to stir against to cross it for twill be a mighty savour of linen through the kingdom as that is one of my grounds and to spare washing 
now on you two I had laid all the profits, guilt hid to have the making of all those of gold and silver for the better personages, and you of those of steel for the common sort, and both by patent. I have brought you your seals in, but now you have prevented me, and I thank you. Sir, I will bear you at mine own apparel. Nay, choose. Do you so too, good father? I like the fashion of the project well. The forks, it may be a lucky one, and is not intricate as one would say, but fit for plain heads has ours to deal in. Do you hear, officers? We discharge you. Exit sergeants. Why, this shows a little good nature in you, I confess, but do not tempt your friends thus. Little Guildhead, advise your sire, great Guildhead, from these courses. And here, to trouble a great man in reversion for a matter of fifty and a false alarm. Away, it shows not well. Let him get the pieces and bring them. You'll hear more else. Father. Exit Guildhead and Plutarchus. Enter Ambler, dragging in Pug. Oh, Master Sledge, are you here? I have been to seek you. You are the constable, they say. Here's one that I do charge with felony for the suit he wears, sir. Who, Master Fitzdotterell's man? Wear what you do, Master Ambler. Enter Fitzdotterell. Sir, these clothes I'll swear are mine, and the shoes the gentlewoman's I told you of. And have him afore a justice, I will. My master, sir, will pass his word for me. Oh, can you speak to purpose now? Not I, if you be such a one, sir. I will leave you to your godfathers in law. Let twelve men work. <clears throat> Do you hear, sir, pray in private? Takes him aside. Well, what say you? Brief, for I have no time to lose. Truth is, sir, I am the very devil and had leave to take this body i am in to serve you which was a cut purses and hanged this morning and it is likewise true i stole this suit to clothe me with but sir let me not go to prison for it i have hitherto lost time done nothing shown indeed no part of my devil's nature now i will so help your malice gainst these parties so advance the business that you have in hand of witchcraft and your possession as myself were in you teach you such tricks to make your belly swell and your eyes turn to foam to stare to gnash your teeth together and to beat yourself laugh loud and feign six voices out you rogue you most infernal counterfeit wretch avaunt do you think to gull me with your aesop's fables here, take him to you. I have no part in him. Sir! Away! I do disclaim. I will not hear you. Exit Sledge with Pug. What said he to you, sir? Like a lying rascal. Tell me he was the devil. How a good jest. And that he would teach me such fine devil's tricks for our new resolution. Oh, pox on him. "'Twas excellent wisely done, sir, not to trust him. "'Why, if he were the devil, we shall not need him, if you'll be ruled. "'Go throw yourself on a bed, sir, and feign you ill. "'We'll not be seen with you till after, that you have a fit, and all confirmed within. "'To Everall. "'Keep you with the two ladies, and persuade them. "'I will to justice either side, and possess him with all.' train shall seek out engine and they too fill the town with every cable is to be veered we must employ out all our emissaries now sir i will send you bladders and bellows sir be confident tis no hard thing to outdo the devil in a boy of thirteen year old made him an ass but t'other day well i'll begin to practice and scape the imputation of being cuckold by mine own act you are right exit fitzdotterell come you have put yourself to a simple coil here, and your friends, by dealing with new agents in new plots. No more of that, sweet cousin. What had you to do with this same witty pole for a lady? Question not that, tis done. You had some strain, bove a la? I had indeed. And now you crack for it. Do not upbraid me. Come, you must be told on't. You are so covetous, 
still to embrace more than you can, that you lose all. Tis right. What would make you more than guilty? Now your suckers. Exeunt. Scene four. A cell in Newgate. Enter shackles with pug in chains. Here you are lodged, sir. You must send your garnish if you'll be private. There it is, sir. Leave me. Exit shackles. Oh, to Newgate brought. How is the name of devil discredited in me? What a lost fiend shall I be on return? My chief will roar in triumph now that I have been on earth a day and done no noted thing, but brought that body back here was hanged out this morning. <laughs> well, would it once were midnight that I knew my utmost? <sighs> I think time be drunk and sleeps. He's so still and moves not. I do glory now in my torment. Neither can I expect it. I have it with my fact. Enter iniquity. Child of hell, be thou merry. Put a look on his round boy and red as a cherry. Cast care at thy posterns and firk in thy fetters. They are ornaments, baby. Have grace thy betters. Look upon me and hearken. Our chief doth salute thee, unless the cold iron should chance to confute thee. He hath sent thee grant parole by me to stay longer, a month here on earth, against cold, child, or hunger. How longer here a month? Yes, boy, till this session, that so thou mayst have a triumphal egression. In a cart to be hanged. No, child, in a car, the chariot of triumph, which most of them are, and in the meantime to be greasy and bowsy, and nasty and filthy and ragged and lousy, with damn me, renounce me, in all the fine phrases that bring on to Tyburn the plentiful gazes. <sighs> he is a devil and may be our chief oh the great superior devil for his malice arch devil i acknowledge him he knew what i would suffer when he tied me up thus in a rogue's body and he has i thank him his tyrannous pleasure on me to confine me to the unlucky carcase of a cut-purse wherein i could do nothing enter satan impudent fiend stop thy lewd mouth dost thou not shame and tremble to lay thine own dull damned defects upon an innocent case there why thou heavy slave the spirit that did possess that flesh before put more true life in a finger and a thumb than thou in the whole mass yet thou rebellest and murmurest what one proffer hast thou made wicked enough this day that might be called worthy thine own much less the name that sent thee first thou didst help thyself into a beating promptly and with it in dangerous to thy tongue a devil and could not keep a body entire one day that for our credit and to vindicate it hinderest for all thou knowest a deed of darkness which was an act of that egregious folly as no one towards the devil could have thought on this for your acting but for suffering why thou hast been cheated on with a false beard and a turned cloak faith would your predecessor cut purse think you have been so out upon thee the hurt thou hast done to let men know their strength and that they are able to outdo a devil put in a body will for ever be a scar upon our name whom hast thou dealt with woman or man this day 
but have outgone thee some way and most have proved the better fiends yet you would be employed yes hell shall make you provincial of the cheaters or board ledger for this side of the town no doubt you'll render a rare account of things bane of your itch and scratching for employment i'll have brimstone to allay it sure and fire to singe your nails off but that i would not such a damned dishonour stick on our state as that the devil were hanged and could not save a body that he took from tyburn but it must come thither again you should e'en ride but up away with him iniquity takes him on his back mount darling of darkness my shoulders are broad he that carries the fiend is sure of his load the devil was wont to carry away the evil but now the evil out carries the devil exit a loud explosion smoke etc enter shackles and the underkeepers affrighted oh me what's this a piece of justice hall is broken down for what a steam of brimstone is here the prisoner's dead came in but now ha huh. where look here Slee, i should know his countenance it is gil cut purse was hung out this morning tis he the devil sure has a hand in this what shall we do carry the news of it unto the sheriffs unto the justices this is strange and savours of the devil strongly i have the sulphur of hell coal in my nose for carry him in away how rank it is exit with the body scene five a room in fitzdotterell's house fitzdotterell discovered in bed lady either side tailbush ambler trains and pitfall standing by him enter sir paul either side meercraft and everell this was the notablest conspiracy that e'er i heard of sir they had given him potions that did enamour him on the counterfeit lady just to the talk of delivery of the deed and then the witchcraft gan to appear for straight he fell into his fit of rage at first sir which since has so increased good sir paul see him and punish the impostors therefore i come madam let master either side alone madam do you hear call in the constable i will have him by he's the king's officer and some citizens of credit i'll discharge my conscience clearly yes sir and send for his wife and the two sorcerers by any means exit ambler i thought one a true lady i should be sworn so did you either side yes by that light would i might ne'er stir else tailbush and the other a civil gentleman but madam you know what i told your ladyship i now see it i was providing of a banquet for them after i had done instructing of the fellow deville the gentleman's man who has found a thief madam and to have robbed your usher master ambler this morning how i'll tell you more anon give me some garlic 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 he begins his fit hark the poor gentleman how he is tormented my wife is a whore i'll kiss her no more and why mayst not thou be a cuckold as well as i <laughs> that is the devil speaks and laughs in him do you think so sir i discharge my conscience and is not the devil good company yes wis how he changes sir his voice and a, a cuckold is wherever he put his head 
with a warrior, if his horns be forth, the devil's companion. Look, look, look else. How he foams and swells. Oh, me, what's that there rises in his belly? A strange thing. Hold it down. We, we cannot, cannot madam. madam. Tis too apparent, this. Wittipole, Wittipole. Enter Wittipole, Manly, and Mrs. Fitzdottrell. How now? What play have we here? What fine new matters? The coxcomb and the coverlet. O oh, strange impudence that these should come to face their sin. And their face justice. These are the parties, sir. Say nothing. Did you mark, sir, upon their coming in how he called Wittipole? And never saw them. I warrant you, did I. Let them play a while. Alas, <laughs> poor gentleman, how he is tortured. Mrs. Fitzdottrell goes to him. Fie, Master Fitzdottrell, what do you mean to counterfeit thus? Oh, oh, she comes with a needle and thrusts it in. She pulls out that and she puts it up in. And now, ah, now, I do not know how, nor where, but she pricks me here and she pricks me there. No, oh, oh. Woman, forbear. What, sir? A practice foul for one so fair. Hath this, then, credit with you? Do you believe in it? Gentlemen, I'll discharge my conscience. Tis a clear conspiracy, a dark and devilish practice. I detest it. The justice sure will prove the merrier man. This is most strange, sir. Come not to confront authority with impudence. I tell you, I do detest it. Re-enter Ambler with Sledge and Guildhead. Here comes the king's constable, and with him a right worshipful commoner, my good friend, Master Guildhead. I am glad I can, before such witnesses, profess my conscience and my detestation of it. Horrible, most unnatural, abominable. They whisper him. You do not tumble enough. Wallow, Nash. Oh, how he is vexed. Tis too manifest. Everell, too meercraft. Give me more soap to foam with. Now, lie still. And act a little. What does he now, sir? Show the taking of tobacco, with which the devil is so delighted. <laughs> and calls for hum. You takers of strong waters and tobacco, mark this. Yellow, 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 yellow. That's starch, the devil's idol of that colour. He ratifies it with clapping of his hands. The proofs are pregnant. How the devil can act? He is the master of players, Master Guildhead. And poets, too. You heard him talk in rhyme. I had forgotten to observe it to you, erewhile. See? He spits fire. Oh, no, he plays at figum. The devil is the author of wicked figum. Why speak you not unto him? If I had all innocence of man to be endangered, and he could save or ruin it, I'd not breathe a syllable in request to such a fool he makes himself. Oh, let me whisper, whisper, whisper. We shall have more of devils to score to come to dinner in me the sinner. Alas, poor gentlemen. Put them asunder. Keep them one from the other. Are you frenetic, sir? Or what grave dotage moves you to take part with so much villainy? We are not afraid either of law or trial. Let us be examined what our ends were, with the means to work by, and possibility of those means. Do not conclude against us ere you hear us. I will not hear you, yet I will conclude out of the circumstances. Will you so, sir? Yes, they are palpable. Not as your folly. I will discharge my conscience and do all to the meridian of justice. You do well, sir. Provide me to eat three or four dishes of good meat. I'll feed them in their trains. Adjust his head and brains shall be the first. 
the devil loves not justice there you may see a spare rib of my wife and a horse pertinence a gilt head hole be not you troubled sir the devil speaks it yes this nut shut pool jowl owl fowl crow bowl crambo another of the devil's games Meercraft, aside to fitzdotterel speak sir some greek if you can is not the justice a solemn gamester peace he curses in Greek, I think. Everell, aside to Fitzdotterel. Your Spanish, yet I taught you. Que bremos el oil de bolas. You ow, your wrist. Let's break his neck in jest, the devil says. What? Would the devil borrow money? Oui, oui, monsieur. Un pauvre diable. Diable ton. It is the devil by his several languages. Enter shackles with the things found on the body of the cup purse. Where is Sir Paul either side? Here. What's the matter? Oh, such an accident fallen out at Newgate, sir. A great piece of the prison is rent down. The devil has been there, sir. In the body of the young cutpurse was hanged out this morning, but in new clothes, sir. Every one of us know him. These things were found in his pocket. Those are mine, sir. I think he was committed on your charge, sir, for a new felony. Yes. He's gone, sir, now, and left us the dead body. But with all, sir, such an infernal stink and steam behind, you cannot see St. Polker's steeple yet. They smelter as far as where, as the wind lies, by this time, sure. Fitzdotterel starts up. Is this upon your credit, friend? Sir, you may see, and satisfy yourself. Nay, then, oh, tis time to leave off counterfeiting. Sir, I am not bewitched nor have a devil no more than you i do defy him i and did abuse you these two gentlemen put me upon it i have faith against him they taught me all my tricks i will tell truth and shame the feet see here sir are my bellows and my false belly and my mouse and all that should have come forth sir are you not ashamed now of your solemn, serious vanity? I will make honourable amends to truth. And so will I. But these are cosiness still, and have my land as plotters with my wife. Who, though she be not a witch, is worse, a whore. Sir, you belie her. She is chaste and virtuous we are honest i do know no glory a man should hope by venting his own follies but you'll still be an ass in spite of providence please you go in sir and hear truths then judge em and make amends for your late rashness when you shall but hear the pains and care was taken to save this fool from ruin his grace of drowned land my land is drowned indeed peace and how much his modest and too worthy wife hath suffered by misconstruction from him you will blush first for your own belief more for his actions his land is his and never by my friend or by myself meant to another use but for her suckers who hath equal right if any other had worse counsels in it i know i speak to those can apprehend me let them repent them and be not detected it is not manly to take joy or pride in human errors we do all ill things they do them worse that love them and dwell there till the plague comes the few that have the seeds of goodness left will sooner make their way to a true life by shame 
than punishment. He comes forward for the epilogue. Thus, the projector here is overthrown. But I have now a project of mine own, if it may pass that no man would invite the poet from us to sup forth to-night, if the play please. If it displeasant be, we do presume that no man will, nor we. Exunt. End of Act Five. End of The Devil is an Ass by Ben Johnson.